Hey guys, it's Greg from BitGobble again, and today I'm going to show you all how to update the BIOS on your motherboard. Chances are you really shouldn't have to worry about doing this for a long time, if not the entire lifespan of your computer, depending on when you buy or build it, and if there are any major changes that come out in that time frame. But I figured I would show you all how it's done, since it is an important task to do in the upkeep and maintenance of your system, and some people might be afraid of working with this lower level type of stuff and may want someone to help hold their hand through it. So today I'm gonna to show you all how this is done and why you may or may not want to do this. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. Before we get started, it's important to know that every brand and even sometimes different lines within said brands have their own BIOSes with their own ways of flashing and different layouts and such. So unfortunately, I can't explicitly demonstrate how to flash every single motherboard out there in existence without, of course, a several hours long video. But what I can do is show you all the general process that one would go through to do so, since for the most part, it is all pretty similar with some small differences depending on the BIOS layouts and such. All right, so moving on, today I'm going to demonstrate how to do the flashing on my personal gaming and uh, workstation rig. The BIOS is about a year or so out of date, I believe, and while I'm not having any major problems with my setup, which I'll talk about in a little bit, this is the only PC that I have that both isn't on the latest BIOS and is something that I'm willing to take down for this process, since I really don't want to take down any of my servers downstairs. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the manufacturer's website for my motherboard. My board is an ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming 4, so what I'll do is just do a search on DuckDuckGo, since that's my preferred search engine, for that exact string, and the first result is ASRock's official product page for this board. Let's scroll down to the support section, then click on BIOS, and click on the link for the global download. One thing I'll mention while we're here is if we look at the most recent version, uh, 420, <laughs> in the release notes section, it mentions that this enables support for Windows 11. This might be a common reason for you needing to update your BIOS. In recent years, a lot of motherboards have been shipping with a built-in TPM module, but left it disabled by default. But now that Windows 11 requires that for the upgrade process from Windows 10, a lot of motherboard manufacturers have had to change course and start enabling it by default. And for that, a lot have also shipped BIOS updates for older boards that just simply turns on the TPM. It really isn't a difficult thing to do. On my board, it was just going into a menu and flipping a setting to enable it. But this is a good example of why you might want to do this. But anyways, getting back to the flashing process, what we now need to do is look up the manufacturer's instructions for how to flash the BIOS, since that will tell us how we need to format our USB stick and where to put the files and such. What we can see here back on the ASRock website is this nice little warning that tells us before we download or update the BIOS to read the how to update below carefully. So in the same table entry that we got our BIOS files from, we'll just click on this instant flash link. That'll open us up to a new tab. And then it just tells us to extract the files from the zip file that was provided for us, then save those extracted files to a FAT32 formatted USB disk, and then of course boot into the BIOS and then run the utility. Other manufacturers may, may require you to just place the zip file directly or do some other things with the files, but ASRock keeps it simple. Nice to see. So based on those instructions, since we already have the files downloaded, let's just unzip them and then plug in a flash drive. Let's open up File Explorer, right click on our drive and click Format. We need to format this to a FAT32 as we read in the instructions. So let's just do a quick format since that'll be good enough. Now that that's ready, let's just copy the unzipped files from our downloads folder onto the flash drive and let's reboot and head into the BIOS. All right, so getting to the BIOS is pretty straightforward. Usually you can just mash the F2 or delete keys while your system is booting up and that should take you there. Other systems might have different keys to press, so be sure to take a look at the splash screen that comes up during boot up since they'll normally have a legend of some sort for what to press for various things. Moving on, since we're now in the BIOS, we can see up here in the top left that I'm running version 3.40, which referencing the table from the ASRock website earlier actually pegs this about a year and a half old. What we need to do to flash the BIOS is go over to the tools tab and, well, a Apparently we need to disable the TPM on this board before doing so. So let's go back to the advanced tab, then CPU configuration, and on the FTPM setting, change it to disabled. Now let's press F10 to save and reboot, and start pressing F2 to get back to the BIOS. Now that we're back here, we can go to the tools tab and click on instant flash. If we created the flash drive correctly, we should get a menu that looks something like this. And the only option we have here is the version that we just downloaded. Just click update and then yes, and now just sit back, kick your feet up and relax, as this will take a while. 
cool, it's done now, so let's just click OK to reboot. I went back into the BIOS after the reboot to make sure that everything was successful, and it appears everything is good. We can see the version is P4.30 now, which is the version that we just downloaded from the ASRock website. Great. You'll also notice that my RAM depicted down here is now listed as DDR4-2133 instead of 3200 like it was before. This happened because flashing your BIOS will reset most settings that you can change here. This is something I probably should have mentioned earlier because if you have like a really complex setup, you might want to take pictures or something of it. But hopefully your setup really isn't too crazy. The only setting that it reset here was my RAM speed, which for me, all I have to do is go back to the overclocking tab and reapply the DOCP profile. Easy enough. But anyways, it looks like we are good here. I'm just going to reapply my DOCP profile and yeah, that's it. Now let's talk about why you would want to do this in the first place. And the first thing that comes to mind for me, mainly because it happened to me recently, is improved hardware support with PCI Express devices. I'm not entirely sure why this is, but the LSI HBA that I ended up putting in my video storage NAS actually required me to update the motherboard's BIOS before the machine would boot properly with the card installed. I'd guess it's something to do with the low level PCI Express commanding that goes on that wasn't quite fully implemented or something. Or maybe it's how the HBA's firmware was trying to initialize that was causing problems. But regardless of whatever the issue was, a BIOS update quickly fixed that issue and allowed me to breathe a sigh of relief. Another reason would be improved performance. And this can be in the form of several things like improving the processor's algorithm for determining when and how high to boost the core clock speeds, uh, tweaking handling of power states, improving stability with higher clocked indoor lower latency RAM, there's a ton of ways that the manufacturers have found over the years to improve CPU performance at a low level, though typically you'll mostly see the huge performance gains early on in a platform's lifecycle. For a recent and kind of big example of this, we saw this in the early days of AM4 when Ryzen 1000 series processors launched where we constantly got BIOS updates that improved things since that launch was a little bit rushed. But things definitely improved over time as more and more people adopted Ryzen and the platform matured. Another thing is that BIOS updates can also introduce fixes for security vulnerabilities and even just random weirdness you might see. Spectre and Meltdown were great examples of security issues that required a low level fix to really mitigate, though it unfortunately affected CPU performance for a lot of systems. And as for general weirdness, I've seen things like the boot menu not showing all bootable device entries that it detects, and I, I can also see them in other parts of the BIOS, and even just some settings just being bugged and not actually applying when you hit save. These and others like it really aren't game breakers by any means, but having that cleaned up with updates is nice to see. But even though BIOS updates can bring improvements to your experience, you need to understand that there are some risks to doing so. The biggest of which is the potential of breaking the board and leaving your system in an unusable state. Though to be clear, this is rather unlikely of it happening. This can happen if you lose power in the middle of the flashing process, which to be fair can be pretty much avoided by just not doing this during a thunderstorm, and maybe plugging your system into a UPS if your building power isn't very reliable. You can also run into issues if you're using a brand spanking new or even a beta bias version that has a bug in it that just wasn't found, or maybe you're just unlucky and your board hates you. Uh, that's entirely possible. And this is usually why I wouldn't recommend you just run out and update your BIOS as soon as a new release gets dropped. Just give it a couple weeks or so to let it get used by others, let them be the guinea pigs, and flush out any bugs that may be in the release. Who knows, maybe by that point you'll see if you actually get any tangible benefits out of it and if it's actually worth the effort of flashing your BIOS. No matter how rare it is though, there's always going to be at least a tiny but not quite negligible risk in doing a BIOS update. Anything that gets developed by humans has at least a small chance of having a problem, and there's no telling if, for whatever reason, your exact combination of hardware has a problem with an update and wasn't caught in testing. Now, again, this isn't to scare you off or anything, since BIOS updates are important, especially in cases like with Spectre and Meltdown that required firmware level fixes to mitigate properly. And I would definitely check at least like once per year, so at minimum, for any updates for security and performance. These warnings are mainly to educate you all on the potential risks, so you're not caught off guard in the event of a problem, like, Oh, Greg said it was safe, so I should just do it. And so you don't go updating your BIOS willy-nilly just for fun. I know, I know shiny new things, shiny new features are all fun and games, but you need to weigh that against the, you know, maybe this is a bugged BIOS or maybe this is just not worth the effort. 
All right, that's all I have for this one. Like I said, there really isn't much to updating your BIOS. Overall, it's a pretty easy process and can be a helpful thing to do over the lifespan of your PC. Though be sure to sound off in the comment section below with your experiences on this topic, or if you feel I've missed something important as a reason either to flash or not to flash your BIOS. I'm all ears. If you disliked the video, then you know what to do, but if you did like it, then go hit that like button and also consider getting subscribed and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss my future videos. I've also got a Discord server if you'd like to join the community and just chat and hang out with us, or if you need it, we can help you with your tech problems. I hope you all have a great day, and I will catch you in the next one.